Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new video of Boulder Skate 3. In this episode, I'm gonna share my enchantment wizard build and some tips for this school of magic, and what kind of fun you can have in and out of combat with such a character. In the D&D world, enchantment is the magic of things like compulsion, attraction, and manipulation. It plays with emotions and motives. This school of magic is especially favored by fey creatures. So, if you have a soft spot for the Feywild, this is your school. The Enchantment School has the best control spells, and it's especially effective at mass controlling humanoid creatures. By specializing in this school, you can be the best controller in the game. Outside of combat, it also gives you an upper hand in conversations by charming people. This makes it easier for you to persuade people or something. Persuasion can be a very powerful skill. You can even persuade some bosses to kill themselves before the battle starts. So this build I made is a multi-class mass controller that controls and attacks from the shadows. It has ten levels of enchantment school wizard and two levels of rogue. You need to reach the second level of rogue because the control spells of the enchantment school are all concentration spells. Which means you need to maintain your concentration on the spell for its effect to last. And if you take damage, you need to make a Constitution ability check to maintain concentration. If you fail the check, the concentration breaks and your effect ends. So by reaching level two of Rogue, you get the ability to hide as a bonus action rather than a standard action. Thus, you can cast your control spell and then hide in the shadows in the same turn and relocate. And the enemies cannot see you or target you anymore. So as long as you are still hiding, it's almost impossible for the enemies to break your concentration. And during the concentration, you can make countered attacks with advantage from the shadows, and then hide and relocate again. When playing this build, it's a good idea to extinguish the lights while you move, because this will give you larger areas to hide. And remember, don't cast the light on your own weapon. On the wizard class side, by specializing into the enchantment school, you get a failsafe called instinctive charm, and that is, when you do get attacked under some rare occasions, you can charm the attacker as a reaction and possibly stop the attack. At level ten, you also get split enchantment, which allows you to target two targets with an enchantment spell that can normally target only one. One of these kinds of spells is your ultimate control spell, hold monster. Which can hold any one enemy completely still, and make attacks against them within close range, guaranteed criticals. Now you can hold two enemies with one cast. The only thing immune to this spell is undead creatures. Split enchantment is also useful when you use your lower level spell slots. Now your lower level slots become more cost effective when casting enchantment spells. So, given all above, what this build needs the most. Is to increase the DC of your spells so that you are more likely to control your targets. All the enchantment control spells are DC spells, which means you don't roll any dice when you cast them. Instead, the spells have a fixed DC, aka difficulty class. Your target needs to roll a D20 to overcome your DC. This is called a saving throw. If they fail, your spell succeeds. So you need to increase your DC as high as possible. The most direct way to increase your DC is to increase your casting ability, which is intelligence for wizards. At 10 intelligence, you have no bonus. Then every two extra intelligence gives you a plus one bonus. Eventually, at 20, the cap, you have a plus five bonus. The other way to increase DC is to equip things that increase DC. So you find any item that can do this, equip it. When originally allocating ability scores, we give the major bonus to intelligence and bring it all the way up to 17, which is the highest possible for now. We'll eventually get it to 20. Then we give the minor bonus to dexterity and bring it to 16. This is your second most important ability. It increases your AC, making you less likely to be hit. It also increases your initiative roll, making you more likely to act before your enemies and control them. Then we forego two strength and two constitution to bring charisma to fourteen, making you better in conversations, like most enchanters do. Normally, when you need to concentrate on things, you need a high constitution to be better at maintaining concentration when taking damage. 
But this build is about hiding away from harm, so we don't need the constitution that much. We leave wisdom unchanged at 10 to get as much mental protection we can get as possible. And because we are a wizard, we have proficiency bonus for wisdom saving throws, which is plus 2 for now, and will eventually become plus 4 at level 9. So our effective wisdom is higher than 10 when making saving throws. For the cantrips, friends is a must-have. It gives you advantages on charisma checks in conversations, making you more powerful at influencing people. And it's from the enchantment school, so feels intact for this character. For the other two, choose two ranged damage cantrips that you feel like. They will be how you deal damage throughout the game. There are a Firebolt, which deals the highest damage and can ignite certain things. Ray of Frost, the damage is lower but can reduce enemies' movement speed. Bone Chill deals the same damage as Ray of Frost and prevents enemies from healing. And finally, Acid Splash, which deals the lowest damage but is an AoE cantrip. Then, for the starting spells, first, we need Mage Armor, a must-have for any wizard who doesn't wear armor. It sets your AC to 13, which is already higher than most light armors. You only need to cast it once each day, and it doesn't require concentration. It will last until long rest, or until you equipped an armor, or until you remove it from your prepared spells. Then, the second, Shield. Another must-have for any wizard build. It's a reaction that gives you another 5 AC when you need it, making you harder to be hit. Remember to untoggle your opportunity attack, in case you waste your reaction on that and can't cast your protection reactions. Then your go-to control spell in the early game, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. It leaves a creature prone on the ground, unable to do anything, and your attacks against it within close range have advantages. At best, it can last for 10 turns, but each turn and every time the target takes damage, it can make another saving throw to try to end the effect. So usually, you can't control a target for very long with this spell. It's only a level 1 spell after all. My strategy is to use it on an enemy of higher threat and focus all attacks to eliminate it ASAP. It's usually enough in the early game. The fourth spell I chose is Long Strider, which I think is a must-have for any party. It increases the target's moving distance for the whole day without concentration, as long as the spell is still prepared. And it's a ritual spell, which means if you cast it outside of combat, it doesn't consume your spell slot. It's free. So every morning, you can cast it on yourself, on your whole party, and on all the creatures you summoned, and everybody moves faster that day. For the other two vacancies, I recommend Enhanced Leap and Fed of All. These two combined give your party more freedom when exploring the map. They are ritual spells too, and they are usually always used outside of combat, so they are almost always free. And now you've learned 6 spells to start the game, but at this point, you can only prepare 4 spells. Usually, I don't prepare Enhanced Leap and Fed of All. And when I need to use spells like this, I take off some spells that are only used in combat, then prepare these ones, then do the jobs, then prepare those combat spells back. This is what's good about being a wizard. Okay, now let's talk about the leveling strategy, when to level into rogue and what you can do in different stages of the game. From level 1 to level 4, we are gonna stick to the wizard class to get first defeat ASAP in order to most quickly increase our spell DC. At level 2, we get to choose into the enchantment school and get our first special school ability, Hypnotic Gaze. It allows you to completely incapacitate an enemy once you succeed, for as long as you want, without concentration. It seems a strong control, but it's more like a failsafe than a weapon, because you can only activate it within close range, and only once each long rest, so I normally don't proactively use it to control enemies. Instead, I only use it when some enemy somehow got close to me. And at level 2, you also get to learn another two spells. I highly recommend Find Familiar. This allows you to summon a creature into your party to help with combat and exploring. Once summoned, they'll be there until their hit points get reduced to zero. 
It's a ritual spell, and summon spells don't need to stay prepared once the creature is summoned. Then at level 3, you can get your first core control spell, Hold Person. It's like the weaker version of Hold Monster, because it only affects humanoid units. But at this stage of the game, most of your enemies are humanoids. Later, when you unlock spell slots of higher levels, you can upcast this spell. For every level increased, you can target one more target, like many other enchantment spells do. Another spell I highly recommend is See Invisible. This is one of the best abilities of a wizard. It lasts a whole day and doesn't need concentration. At level 4, you get to choose your first feat. Here we choose Resilient Intelligence to increase our intelligence to 18 and thus increase our casting ability by 1. Then at level 5, we can afford to level into Rogue because we already have enough control to cope for a while. At Rogue level 1, you can get 2 skill proficiencies. Now we can take this chance to bring our stealth right up to the sky. This will make you really good at hiding. Then, at Rogue level 2, you can get the ability to hide as a bonus action rather than a standard action, and now you are officially the controller in the shadows. Then, at level 7, we return to the wizard class. At this level, you get to learn another powerful spell, Hypnotic Pattern, which allows you to hypnotize all units in a large area all at once. But remember, this affects your allies and yourself too. At this level, you also get to learn another powerful spell that every mage should learn, Counter Spell. This allows you to completely negate an enemy spell as a reaction. Counter Spell can negate any spell whose level is not higher than the spell slot you spend. If the spell's level is higher, you need to make an ability check. But since you have a high intelligence, it's rather easy for you to succeed that check. Then, at level 8, you get your major failsafe, Instinctive Charm. At level 9, you can learn another powerful AoE control, Confusion. This spell doesn't affect your allies, so it's much easier to cast than Hypnotic Pattern. It makes enemies do all kinds of weird things, even attack each other. But they may still attack you, so it's better to cast it from a distance. At this level, you can also learn the spell Conjure Minor Elemental to summon another unit for your party, which is recommended for any mage build. At level 10, you can choose your second feat. Here, choose Ability Improvement, and finally increase your intelligence to the 20 cap, maximizing your spell DC and spell attacks. At level 11, you get your ultimate control spell, Hold Monster. And you can also learn Conjure Elemental to summon the strongest unit you can summon for your party. Finally, at level 12, you get your ultimate special ability, Split Enchantment. Okay, we have talked about how good this build is, now let's talk about its weakness. The major weakness of any enchantment mage is that all the enchantment control spells target the enemy's wisdom, so if your enemies have high wisdom, it will be hard for you to control them. And even if you succeed, they are more likely to break free in the coming turns, so you may want to prepare spells that target other abilities in case you run into enemies with high wisdom. And that is everything about this build. I had fun building it, hope you like it too. And if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.